Join me for a conversation with some of the creators behind the Crit Like a Girl podcast. Welcome to DiceGeeks.com Tabletop RPG Show. Level up your RPG campaigns by filling yourself with stories and knowledge. Explore topics from archaeology to film history to writing to literature and much, much more. This is DiceGeeks.com Tabletop RPG Show. Welcome to the show. My name is Matt and I am your host. This is the podcast where we learn how to become better game masters and role players by filling ourselves with stories and knowledge. All right, guys, you know who I am by now. I am sure if you want to check out my resources for game masters and role players, you can do so at DiceGeeks.com, DriveThroughRPG.com or Amazon.com. Just type in DiceGeeks, all one word, or... Search for the Books of Random Tables, and you will find them. Now, without further ado, here's the interview. It is my pleasure to welcome two guests to the show. First, we have the Dungeon Master of Crit Like a Girl podcast, Star, and we have a player from Crit Like a Girl podcast, Alana. Hey, Star, Alana, welcome to the show. Hello. Hi there. Thank you so much for having us. Super excited to be on. Yeah, no problem. It's my pleasure. Uh, Star, why don't you start us off? When were you first introduced to uh, Dungeons & Dragons or tabletop role-playing games in general? So I have played D&D for several years, pretty much since 5e first came out. I kind of picked up the original like starter set they had before everything was really out, where they only had like four or five different races and classes ready for you. Mm-hmm. And I kind of skimmed through that. Uh, for a very long time, I didn't actually play a lot of it because I didn't know too many people who were super interested in it. But over time, I, I found more groups and then I got interested in being a dungeon master and kind of started running it because I wanted to play and I wanted other people to enjoy as much as I did. Yeah, that's awesome. How about you, Alana? So I'm very much a newbie, um, especially in our podcast. I started about three, four years ago. Um, I've known about it for a very long time, but my husband is a big player and he kind of roped me into his campaign one day with a couple buddies of his. Mm-hmm. And um, I just, I played a little bit. I played like, I think three rounds with them and I got kind of bored with it. Just like with their playing style, they did a lot of like really heavy role playing and I was like I'm bored with this for the moment so I stopped with them um, and then we did like a trial podcast with me S- star was in it right weren't you uh, I believe I was running that one as well as yeah you were and then like a couple of other f- of our friends and I was like okay this is a little more fun like I like this playing style more and I guess like our current campaign is like the longest I have put pl- I've consecutively played and I'm definitely enjoying it more like the longer we're going I'm getting more comfortable with it nice now star you said that you kind of just became interested as soon as 5e was hitting what kind of uh, sparked your imagination about Dungeons and Dragons and made you just be so interested in it so wildly uh I've always been a big writer Um, I used to write a lot, especially when I was younger. I have a whole degree that's kind of tangentially related to that. Uh, But because I have a degree in it, it means that I work in a field where I do a lot of um, a lot of reading and a lot of like copywriting and copy editing. And so I got to a point where like I would get home and I was like, I don't want to look at a piece of paper anymore, but I still had that like creative drive and I wanted to tell a story and I wanted to like make something. And so playing tabletop role-playing games, uh, Call of Cthulhu was another one I play, but especially D&D is really that thing where I can have that creative outlet without also going, oh my God, if I read another word, I'm going to have my head explode. (laughs) Yeah. And of course, a lot of people who are writers are involved in tabletop role playing games. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, Because they're so creative. Uh, So Alana, what do you think it is about tabletop role playing games or D&D specifically that kind of kept you coming back, even though uh, you got a little bored with your husband's group? Um, 
I think honestly, a lot of it is stars storytelling, like the way that they tell the story that we're in has helped. Um, and our group as a whole has really activated the, I like shiny things and, oh, here's dice. Dice are very shiny and <laughs> let it turn me into a Paris <laughs> goblet, <laughs> which is yeah. pretty cool. But also like, I am very much like, I love fantasy and like seeing like the fantasy that I grew up on. I, I grew up on Lord of the Rings, love it. And like seeing like little bits of what I grew up on that and then seeing it in D&D is like oh those are parallels and that's really cool I could actually like expand on that and it I'm also a bit of a writer just like as a hobby and just like that really as my my writer brain is like oh this is really cool I like this now mm-hmm. yeah yeah absolutely and again I think uh uh either everybody who plays uh Dungeons Dragons is either a writer or they want to be, or uh, they will be one day, I think, Mm -hmm. (laughs) because it is just, uh, it is, it just lends itself right into that creativity Um, so much. Well, now star. So you said you are running, uh, you are the dungeon master for the crit, like the girl podcast. And uh, before we dive into the podcast, a little bit more in detail. Um, you did say something that I find to be true um, since I've been playing for a long time is that if uh, there comes a time when you want other people to play, you just have to become the dungeon master. Isn't that right? A little bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm definitely still a player. I, I play a lot of, I play a lot of games um, and I love yeah, being a you player. Do. <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, and I love being a player, but there's also something about building a world and just kind of laying out that world for people that like I was friends with almost our entire group way before we started D&D and so just kind of laying out this entire thing and going okay I want you guys to have fun here what do you guys want to do in this entire world I'm creating for you guys to just play in Mm -hmm. oh that's neat um and so like how many games are you playing apparently um that's a lot (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I play um, currently, um, I'm actually playing a little less right now, but I play about four-ish games a week, and then I run Crit Like a Girl whenever I can. <laughs> um, it yeah. used to be so much worse. There was a point where I was playing like six or seven games a week, and it was a lot, but... <laughs> wow. Wow. So this is six or seven sessions of like D&D or another tabletop role-playing game uh, per yeah. week. Mm-hmm. yeah wow there, there's a reason i don't do that as much anymore <laughs> literally wow. like at the what was uh-huh. back in like the fall uh back in like august or whatever uh star was like okay now that we're done i'm gonna go hop on to my other game we're all like what it's well, like was... nine o'clock at night what the crap are you talking about <laughs> that, that was when i was also dming another game so i was dming two games back to back sometimes oh wow uh, I, so that was fun <laughs> i still don't know how you keep all those games separate like well as a player it's not hard as a dm it got confusing but as a player i was just like okay now i just dump all of this and adopt this character brain for a little while Wow. So you were running two sessions back to back, uh, different campaigns that that's, that's a little mind boggling actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't do that as much anymore. We, uh, that group is actually on hiatus cause just life stuff. Sure. Um, but that actually has, uh, made my life a little bit easier. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine. Um, yeah, I mean, I would, that, that I mean, I would love to play that much sometimes, but then it is, a, it sounds a bit overwhelming though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it just, it just depends. And there, there's yeah. groups that, you know, don't meet as often. And there's groups that meet consistently every week at the same time. Sure. And I have no idea how we've managed that for this long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Consistency is something in, in, in tabletop role-playing games. It's always, it's always a difficult, uh, difficult thing. Well, why don't you guys uh, then, um, maybe we'll start off with Star. Why don't you tell us a bit about what is Crit Like a Girl and just kind of give us the pitch of that and then we'll dive in and then we'll talk about Alana's character and things like that. 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, when we first created Critical Hit Girl, the entire premise was that we wanted a story that really was like female led where all of the characters get to be like heroines and, and get to really display just as much as we can a female led show because it's a solid representation that you're seeing a lot more now, but especially when I first got into d and that was not something I got a lot of. I was oftentimes probably one of the only people in my group that was even remotely female presenting. Most people in the groups I was in were just guys. And um, so when we started creating this, we wanted that representation and I wanted to be able to, you know, tell a story that really got to display that and actually lean into you know, telling this kind of cinematic narrative where they really got to be heroes. Um, I think they're slightly regretting that because the more I'm allowed to lean into cinematic stuff, the more I <laughs> lean towards um, psychological horror narratives. Oh, and good. I think they're oh, regretting yeah, that a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I'm working on it. It's fine. This would have uh, been better on Halloween. <laughs> um. But uh, it, it is most mostly just high fantasy and just trying to tell as much as I can a, a story with them, of course, getting to lead where the story goes and me having to work with that because that's the crux of DMing is letting your players do what they're going to do and, you know, fo- following them. Yeah, yeah. And um, is it in the Forgotten Realms or in your own universe? I- I'm getting the sense that you probably created your own world or something. Uh, yeah, I did. I did create my own world. Um, I tend to do a lot of homebrew just because uh, I do not have the effort of will to sit down and read every single book on the Forgotten Realms. And there's mm-hmm. always going to be stuff about the Forgotten Realms that I don't know. Mm-hmm. So I, I tend to be more comfortable with homebrew because I understand the inner workings of it because I made it up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, ab- absolutely. And uh, sometimes, you know, the, it, it may sound a little cheap, but I, I'll say that quite a, quite often. It's just if if I'm making it up, uh, I don't have to look in a book to figure it out. <laughs> and mm-hmm. um, uh, I, I think some people kind of underestimate that, and they think, oh, well, you know, if I, I if I start making up this world, um, I'm giving myself tons and tons of work. And you're like, well. You know, maybe, but uh, you never have to look in a 400 page book or pay $50 for a book to find out what that is because you can just make it up. You're giving yourself work either way. It's whether you want to make it up or whether you want to devote time to research. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so now, Alana, you're a player in the podcast. Uh, Why don't you just give us a thumbnail sketch of your uh, character before we dive into kind of some of the specifics of the campaign and that? Um, so I play Zuri. She is a half elf, half human bard. Um, and in our podcast, there is flute playing that is sprinkled throughout in the background. And that's actually me playing. Um, that is live music. I play flute in real life. And I thought it'd be fun to integrate that into my character. Um, and she co- she comes from a port town. And I, I've told this to Star that I've really worked into uh, she knows a lot of sea shanties because mm-hmm. thank you, TikTok. I really love sea shanties now. <laughs> and I'm hoping to like bring that out into the podcast where I actually sing sea shanties, nice. um, which being a, a musician of an instrument, it's like, uh, I play an instrument for a reason. Do I want to do that to myself? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's interesting because a friend of the podcast, Tristan Zimmerman, has recently designed an entire role-playing game around collecting sea shanties. Nice. It, is called, it is called Shanty Hunters, and it is based on the Gumshoe uh, RPG engine. And that's a big shout out to Tristan there, but uh, uh, just had a very successful Kickstarter. Uh, so if you want some uh, she- sea shanties, you should check out Shanty Hunters, which I think is the only <laughs> game where you collect uh, magical uh, sea- 
uh, sea shanties, if I can even say the word right now, for some reason, <laughs> I'm stumbling over it. But uh, say sea shanties five times fast. Oh, yeah, my God, no. <laughs> no, I can't even say it once. <laughs> once slow. I'm, I'm messing it up. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Well, that's really interesting, though. That is a really interesting character. So, um, Star, why don't you kind of just... Uh, uh, give us uh, kind of a window into this world that you're creating uh, where Crit Like a Girl takes place. Uh, I mean, well, may, you know, you don't, you don't necessarily have to do like the thousand page one, but like, you know, just like a, a you know, a quick hit, but I'm sure you got a lot of material, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I will go, notes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will at least go with the, the first thing I wrote, which was actually the religion system in that there are only five gods in this world. And it okay. was one God from each of the four elemental planes basically got lonely and ended up coming together in this empty space and just wanted to be with each other and wanted to be a family. And so created gifts for each other and in doing so created the world and the sun and the moon and all of this stuff and then they wanted to share that um you might be noticing a pattern between me as a person and the system i created but kind of just wanted to share what they had and share that happiness and so created sentient life and when they did so accidentally created a fifth god um which is mm. the god of magic and uh, also knowing that magic has to come to an end, which kind of covers death. And so all of this built up over time as these humans grew and there were um, events that I am not going to get too far into because I actually don't think my players have discovered a lot of them yet <laughs> uh, that definitely have led to um, something going on where there is kind of a... I'm trying to phrase this in a way that's not going to be spoilers for Alana. <laughs> I was going to say, spoiler alert here. <laughs> Alana's yeah. taking notes over here. <laughs> I was like, hey. um, okay, I, th I think I can phrase this. Um, kind of a corruption of magic in a certain way. I think okay. I think you guys have figured that out by now. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so it is really right now them exploring what has caused this. And um, hopefully once they get in more information about that, I can reveal a lot more about it in the actual podcast itself. Nice. Nice. No, that sounds really interesting. And, Can we uh, tell you the uh, sure. nickname we've come up with for uh, the possible corruption? <laughs> sure. <laughs> we've nicknamed it Grandpa Rot. My oh, poor good. sweet boy. <laughs> You've murdered him so. Uh oh, I sent some inside jokes there, but uh, well, is this not well, not really like just the way that Star has portrayed this deity? There's just like there's rotting things and fungi, and um, it's just I, like I have learned that if I give my characters information and do not explicitly give them a name for what they have encountered, <laughs> they're gonna come up with one. His name is Grandpa Rot. <laughs> It's Grandpa definitely Rot. not. <laughs> but that's what we refer to. We have like we have nicknames like our uh character Sildwen, who is the unofficial leader of the group. Uh her nickname is Baby Deer because <laughs> she's a druid. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. like it, there's little nicknames here and there, but yeah, that deity is we call him Grandpa Rot. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, it seems like there will come a time when Star will reveal something and you'll have to change the name, probably. <laughs> I doubt it'll change. <laughs> you doubt it'll it's, change. It's yeah. not. I'm going to give them the actual name of this person. And they're going to be like, mm -hmm, cool. Grandpa anyway. Rot. Yeah, Grandpa. <laughs> yeah, Grandpa Rot. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Once once you let your players uh into your world, they start uh putting their fingerprints all over it. <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah. is excellent. Yeah. Yo, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And so now with the podcast, I, I was just wondering, um, say Star, when you when you said you started running games and then now you're doing this podcast, did you change your your DMing style? Does the podcast force you to do things that like normally at a table that you wouldn't do or on roll 20 or something like that that you wouldn't do? Uh, well, so one of the things that I had to get used to is we do a lot of theater of the mind, which I'm not used to. I'm so used to okay. having battle maps and having oh, wow. tokens and having like being kind of organized and having all that. And we 
kind of made the decision as a group going into this. We're like, we don't want to do that because we don't want to get too reliant on, well, I move here and not be describing what we're doing for a purely audio format. Mm -hmm. So that was a lot to get used to. Um, The other thing is just, I try and actually do a lot less combat with these guys. Um, I try and just let them have the story. And if we get into combat, we get into combat. But uh, I think I, I think listening to an entire session purely of combat is not nearly as exciting as, you know, uncovering a mystery or just having interesting role play. So I, I, there's a lot more of me being hands off and just going, OK, what do you guys want to do? Where where are you guys exploring? OK, no, that's interesting. Now. I do find it interesting kind of that you said you were coming from kind of battle maps and tokens and minis uh, into more of the theater of the mind. So um, what has that change kind of forced you to do as you're kind of interacting with your players? Uh, I, I mean, I, I still try and make maps um, as much as I can and just provide them with kind of a visual cue. Um, I, I definitely made a map for um, a recent battle that we had that will probably not be actually on the podcast for a little while um so Those they the knew they were... help us for yeah. sure uh but obviously i, I don't want to be like okay well this is where your token is and this is so there's a lot more of kind of making sure that i am very specifically describing their exact surroundings um mm-hmm. especially when it's their turn um which i think has just led more into me having to be more descriptive in general Um, I can't rely so much on, well, you see this and then letting them go from there. It's reiterating and trying to give new information to not be repetitive, but that leads to me giving a lot more new information. Yeah, no, that's interesting. Um, and and definitely if if you don't have a battle map or something like that, you can't just the player just can't look down at the battle map and say, Oh, uh, what is this big tree like? You have to just even, you know, let them know that there might even be a tree right there or something mm-hmm. like that, right? Yeah, very much. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then you did mention you said it it's not very combat heavy. Um and I find that interesting because, uh, and you said it was more role play heavy. I find that interesting because Alana said you were you were getting kind of bored with the first group because they were pretty RP heavy, but now you're doing a lot of RP. So Alana, what's different between uh, this campaign and that one that you're getting into this campaign and RPing a lot more? I think it's mostly the style of storytelling. Mm-hmm. Like stars trouble at the beginning of like being the only female presenting person in the group. That was my trouble as well as that I was in a group of all guys. And so they have their own way of storytelling and then doing battle. And it's a long drawn out battle. And my character is sitting there and doing nothing because they're doing 20 minutes of whatever their part is. And um, I think that was the issue. Whereas now it's, like there are some times where like, yeah, my character's not actively doing anything. Um, but I think it's also the part of I am becoming more confident and in interjecting my character now. Whereas at the beginning, I would definitely was not. I was like, I'm I'm a little more shy. I don't know what's going on. Don't know what to do. Um, <clears throat> but I think just like the way that we're able to kind of because we all know each other well, kind of naturally take turns in the role playing and interject naturally is really keeping me interested. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I think I think sometimes it, it can be a struggle for really any new player to kind of you know, join a group that maybe has played together for a while. Um, Cause we're experiencing that in my group right now, we had a new player joined and he, uh, he kind of just doesn't say much. And we're like, Hey, you know, Ryan, what's going on? And he's like, well, you guys are doing all your stuff. And, and I don't know when to, I don't know when I should, you know, say anything or whatever. So we're, we're trying to make a, a, a really conscious uh, effort to make sure that he uh, knows that he can just, uh, you know, 
act and do things, you know, while we're, while we're kind of doing our stuff. And uh, I think that is kind of always a struggle um, for certain players or for new players, especially, uh, you know, if you're, especially if you're just learning the game for the first time, um, it, it takes a while to kind of build up that confidence um, with the rules and uh, with the other players at the table. So that, that is an interesting uh, dynamic, but uh, I know it's, it sounds like crit, like a girl that uh, Alana, that you're really uh, kind of uh, uh, learning how to, uh, you know, step in there and really take uh, your character in some interesting places. Yeah, I am. And it's, um, and it's really fun, funny in the fact that like, I'll, do like a spell or something all, all the girls are like oh my god you're a genius like really i thought this was like just like a natural thing like this is what i should do no you're a genius this is amazing like oh okay cool <laughs> yeah. yeah i i will say that is one of the things that i love about all of all of the players we have in that is every single one of you guys is incredibly supportive of the others and it's yes. amazing to not have anyone in the group that's like well no it's everyone is totally on board for okay cool you get to do your thing and let's let's I want to see how this goes we're so I love that we're so unproblematic with each other (laughs) there's there's no like oh I have beef with this person so I'm like gonna single them out in battle or whatever like no we we all support each other and it's great yeah, no, that's, that's really, that's a really good sign of a healthy group when everybody is kind of, uh, you know, looking out for each other and saying, oh, you know, you're the druid. This is, this is like your moment to do something great. And they'll kind of either push that person into the spotlight or kind of step back and let them have a moment that is always so, uh, uh, I don't know. It's just always so good when you see a group like that, instead of, uh, you know, a group where, you know, people are trying to uh, kind of uh, always be the focus or kind of push people out of the way or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now. um, So star, why don't you give us some background then on the podcast? Like when did you start it? How many sessions or seasons are you in? And just uh, kind of what a listener could expect if they tuned into uh, one of your episodes of crit like a girl. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we started recording last, God, last January. We started posting last January. We started recording last fall. That's true Uh, because we gave ourselves a big buffer. Yeah. mm -hmm. So, uh, we've been recording for, um, probably a year and maybe a third now. Um, we've been posting, um, this entire year. We literally started, I believe very early January was our first episode drop. Um, and, we are currently in our second arc. Um, we kind of split it up into less seasons and more just kind of natural story arcs so that we don't have to worry about a specific number of episodes going where, um, and we can just kind of tell the story as it comes. But uh, one of the things we are focusing on is kind of making not shorter episodes, but definitely not like two or three hour episodes because I've definitely listened to some podcasts that are very long very long episodes. Yeah. So we usually try and keep ours around what 40, 40 minutes, 45, uh, somewhere in there and yeah. just kind of, uh, tell the story as it goes. Um, anyone who is just listening to the podcast for the first time, we do have a arc one recap that I think we put up as soon as that was done before arc two started. But, uh, arc one is really where you get to see the characters kind of come together and really start shining for the first time and slowly get to know each other. So it, it's very interesting to listen. The first couple of episodes are maybe a little rough audio wise, <laughs> but um, there's a definite difference in quality, even of the characters as they get to really fill, fulfill their roles and kind of start learning. So it's it's very interesting to listen through. And I hope that anyone who does want to listen will uh, bear with us for those first couple episodes, because once it hits their stride, I'm, I'm really proud of where all of the players have come. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and just thinking about that, you said like you keep the episodes like 40, 45 minutes. Is that splitting then uh, sessions up in editing or do you just have short sessions? Uh, it is usually splitting up sessions in editing. Um, our, 
uh, one of our other players, she is our, our ranger, I guess, is the closest to what she is. Um, <laughs> yeah. She does a lot of the editing and she's incredible on much more on top of it than I am. Um, and so she's, she's kind of in charge of that. And she's done a really good job of kind of finding places where it makes narrative sense and then contact me and be like, okay, so we need a new, like two, three sentence lead in. Can you just say some stuff so I can start the next episode? And I'm like, yeah, okay. So she's been really good about splitting those up. So it makes narrative sense, but also, so it's not overwhelming. Yeah, no, I can, I can definitely see that. <laughs> I could definitely see also like needing like, hey, we need a little bit better of a, of a cliffhanger or a segue here because we're gonna make an editing mark or something like that. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I guess another big question, I guess, to you, Star, is like, you know, and to Alana as well, I guess. But why a podcast? Why not just play? you know, why not just play uh, your normal, you know, uh, every Tuesday night or whatever instead? Why, why make it a podcast? I think it was mainly um, Stephanie's idea. Um, she plays our ranger. Um, and she was just like, Hey, I have this idea for a podcast. What do y'all think? And we did like a trial run of it and we all had fun with it. And so it just kind of took off from there of what I understand of it was that was mostly her idea. Yeah. She, she was definitely a driving force behind it. And uh, really what I said earlier was we, we did want to make something to have that representation in the space, because again, when we first started planning this, there wasn't quite as much of that. Um, and we really wanted to make something where like, where people who maybe don't necessarily fit in at the, quote unquote more traditional D D table uh could you know have something to listen to where they're like this sounds fun i i want to play this and i not feel pressured to fit a specific role or or type of table because there are so many different types of tables out there and we wanted to show that there's you know some for people for everyone basically yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so Alana, I guess uh, I had asked Star about how being, you know, on a podcast changed her DMing. How has being on a podcast changed your playing? Or I know since you're relatively, you know, still a new player, has it changed your playing at all? Um, it's definitely giving the challenge of because we don't use visuals other than like a few references for towns or a battle scene. Um, having to verbally describe everything, like the scenes or what my character is actually doing, um, that's kind of changed because in my brain's like, oh, like I can act it out, whatever I'm doing, like if I'm face to face with somebody. But because we're doing a podcast, I have to describe it so that people can envision it. Uh, and that that's kind of a challenge, but I really like the challenge of that. Um, I know, I, I think in the beginning we caught each other here and there of like, Hey, what does that look like? Hey, you need to describe that. I'm like, Oh yeah, there's people listening to me. Okay. <laughs> um, and then it's also having to really remember things that happened beforehand um, cause you know, in every, I feel like in every tabletop, there's probably at least one good note taker and you rely on them. We we're the same way. We have one good note taker. I try my best to do that too, just for my own sake, but like having to remember what happened just because our sessions are, I guess, not that long, only a couple of hours. Um, but like having to remember like what happened and that could have been like weeks ago kind of yeah. influences how I play as well. Spoiler alert, the good note taker, not me. <laughs> <laughs> how many times have we had to remind you of things? <laughs> Listen, don't worry about it. <laughs> Love you. Mean it. <laughs> I, I fully rely on our, our uh, Sarah who plays our, or cat who plays our druid, 
uh, has been instrumental in me going, all right, what, where did, did we, we stop last time? <laughs> what were we doing? I don't even remember. Yeah. Yeah. But you have the excuse of also doing multiple games. So like, I would kind of expect you to be like, crap, I don't remember. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, I certainly rely on the player in our group that's the note taker uh, when I'm running. I- I'm playing right now, but I usually run. And when that player is taking notes, like I just sometimes just feel like I can forget stuff. And I'll just ask later on <laughs> during the session, because if I mention, oh, what was that? Uh, what was that NPC's name that you met in that town like 10 sessions ago? This player is just like, uh uh, you know, his name was this or her name was that. And you're just like, oh, go oh, great. Done. OK. Um, yeah, yeah. because I, I think the I think the dungeon master has enough work to do. So the players, if the players can remind me of a ton of stuff, I am going to take that every time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because it's like I'm already making what, like a thousand decisions in in this uh you know this two or three hour period um if uh if you can remember the name of that shopkeeper uh, you know uh you know nine pounds back that that's that would be awesome because i've forgotten (laughs) yeah it's super nice me having like a a full list of like npcs that i like know they're going to interact with or i'm pretty sure they're going to come across at some point and then they're like we want to go here and i'm like all right, let me make up a random shopkeeper whose name I'm not going to remember in 10 minutes. Hold on. Yeah. And then give them an accent that you'll mess up. Oh, God. I don't want to talk about my accent. <laughs> They're uh, not the most consistent thing in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, it, it, that happens. That happens to the best of us. <laughs> One of our baddies was, uh, didn't uh, Sindri turn from like slightly Irish to Southern to Midwestern or something? <laughs> She was originally supposed to be like Australian and then it just went so (laughs) far, so far off the rails. I don't know what she is anywhere, but you're going to run into her and she's going to have some kind of an accent. (laughs) Gosh, I like Alana's like, I didn't even mention Australian. Like what? No, (laughs) no. I think, oh no, it was uh, our ranger Poppy. I think she's supposed to be like Irish or something sounding. Yeah, she's, she's something in there. Uh, Yeah. And then listening to her accent messed me up and then we just got <laughs> tangled up and it was it's it's fine you'll run into Sendry and she's going to have a very specific accent that I can now do because I've done it for another character for long enough now hey and, practice and that's what she sounds like now that's <laughs> how it happens <laughs> That is funny. Now, Star, I, I I should ask, I think a lot about, obviously, uh, a lot of the people who listen to the podcast are dungeon masters, they're game masters and other systems. We're all trying to get better at being, uh, you know, better game masters, better dungeon masters. Um, and I think a lot about session prep or, or DM prep, because I've written a little book called the No Prep Game Master, and I have different ideas on how to run games and that, because I've been running games since I was nine years old and that was a that was a really long time ago um yeah and uh so i you know i'm not i can't call myself young anymore but um uh, that was a long time ago and um i was just wondering how are you prepping for these games and you know uh, maybe specifically crit like a girl how you prep for sessions but then Maybe how do you prep for six games a week? I, I don't understand that one <laughs> too much. Well, okay. So the other the other ones, luckily, I'm not DMing. Okay, good. good. Um, okay, good. <laughs> I am a player in a lot more, which is a lot easier in terms of prep because it really is just like embodying a character. For mm-hmm. for DMing, it's I usually try and get a sense of what the group wants to do before, especially if it's going to be a little bit before the next session, I try and get an idea of like what they're thinking so that I have a couple different paths Mm -hmm. kind of planned out. And obviously they're going to sometimes pick the path I didn't plan at all. And then I have to, you know, improvise. But uh, a lot of times it's, it's just kind of having an idea of where they want to go and knowing what, is happening in the world and what they're going to end up interacting with and not because of that. Mm -hmm. Um, Because there's stuff happening in the world that they're nowhere near right now because they chose to go a certain direction. And so obviously stuff is happening beyond them, but they're down a specific, wow, (laughs) they're down a specific path. Mm -hmm. Um, And so 
it's it's a lot of prepping and being like, all right, these are places they're likely to get to. These are people they're likely to meet. This is what each of those people know. Um, and I try as best I can to boil NPCs down so I'm not like overwhelmed to just, this is kind of who they are. This is what they want. This is kind of what motivates them. Because I feel like if you know what someone wants and what someone is motivated by and maybe what something is kind of concerned about, that can fuel a lot of NPC role play well enough to kind of give them a certain life of their own without me having to write, you know, a 10 page backstory for every NPC. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, that that's really interesting. I think kind of what you said there, like knowing uh, you know, kind of what your players are up to or what their characters are up to is, uh, is very important uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, having certain interactions, because if I know, you know, if I know my bard uh, is, you know, is looking for whatever, you know, his lost sister or something, well, I know what kind of NPCs, you know, I know something they can say to get his attention really quick or something like that. You know, I mean, you know, I just know that right off. So that is, that is really interesting. I think it is uh, good for dungeon masters to understand that um, we can take a lot of clues from our players. Um, and now Alana, I know at one point star said that uh, they would just say something like, what do you guys want to do? Is that, how you handle sometimes the sessions? Did you just kind of come in and say, uh, I know we were kind of going this way, but hey, I want to go this way now or something like that? Uh, generally, like when she, whenever Star says, you know, what do y'all want to do? Um, we, at least one of us will pick a direction like, oh, I want to go to the shop. Oh, oh I want to go check out this area. And either we do the, don't do the thing split up <laughs> um, or we all kind of go along with it um, with whoever made the decision. Yeah. Um, if we do split up um, it's generally somebody is babysitting Poppy who, who is our ranger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, do, I don't understand the reference. <laughs> uh, I, there's a very specific dynamic with this character yeah. that is specifically because the player who plays Poppy in real life, the player who plays our cleric, they are sisters. Okay. So that yes. the the sibling dynamic <laughs> is um, there. Is there. Um okay. so it, it tends to get a little bit um Treating Poppy as if she's a lot less competent than she really is. Well, wow, it, well it's I not see. just that. It's also the fact that Poppy's a full-blown alcoholic. <laughs> so that it's too. making sure that Poppy doesn't do anything stupid. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. You, you, you always have to have one of those every once in a while, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, what do you want to do? You can explore the the lost city or follow the map to the legendary library or find the lost silver mines in the mountain. Uh, is there an inn nearby? I, I'm a, you know, <laughs> I'm and like, like, get oh. drunk. yeah, exactly. Well, like, oh, okay. I guess you can do that. I guess. <laughs> well, I, I will say it's interesting in that, especially in how Alana just presented it because our cleric has done an excellent job of oh, making God. the group look at Poppy that way. And then like, <laughs> yeah, the rest of the group is like, yeah, we're babysitting Poppy. I'm like, y'all don't need to babysit Poppy. Are you paying yes. attention to what, J what Jinx is doing? Cause that's yeah. way more concerning. <laughs> yeah. Our, our cleric is, I have deemed, uh, what I call her the, uh, embodiment of chaos trickster clerics man oh good oh yes yeah trickster. she, she okay. is the embodiment of chaos and really should be the one that's babysat because she oh my god mm -hmm. <laughs> ray of sunshine on too many uppers that can just kill things on a whim <laughs> <laughs> and but we're all concerned with the drunk yeah mm -hmm. yeah well yeah yeah no that sounds interesting <laughs> who is also our tank oh that's, oh yes the clerics the tank right yeah it's, it's certainly a party dynamic 
<laughs> it, it's an, an interesting dynamic. And, and then our druid, it, who's baby deer, is also, she turns into a dire wolf a lot. So we also have a big dog. Mm-hmm. You know. <laughs> who is the best girl. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, that's pretty intimidating. Actually. That's pretty cool. Yeah. What level are you guys now? Uh, five. Yeah. You guys are five right now. Okay. Um, which I, we started at level three, I believe, cause I wanted everyone to start with their subclasses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, just because I believe when you're making a character, being able to start with your subclass gives you a lot more, um, yeah. room to work with your backstory. Mm-hmm. Um, it has not gone the way I thought because we already have one person who is already multi-classing and I'm like, I mean, I'm going to let you, I'm not going to stop you from doing this, but, <laughs> but why we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. And now, so Alana, you're, you're barred. What, what subclass? Uh, she lore, right? Yeah. Lore. College of lore. Okay. Got it. Okay. No, that's cool. Um, yeah. So now star, I guess, what are some of your plans for the podcast? Like, uh, are you guys, uh, really in for kind of the long haul and you're going to take this thing, uh, on for, uh, some more years or follow out some different story arcs? I really, really am hoping so. Um, we obviously right now, because it's the holiday scheduling is a minor nightmare, mm-hmm. but uh, hopefully once things settle down, we'll, we'll be able to record a lot more, get our backlog back up. But uh, I've definitely at least set up a story where I'm hoping there's going to be several arcs. Um, mm-hmm. the, the, I know the group knows for sure. Like there's uh, a lot more things to, figure out and they have a pretty big clue that they have no idea what it means yet so um, wait I'm what hoping- uh, yeah, yeah alana checking her notes <laughs> wait what, what? <laughs> we have a big clue but we don't know what it means oh yeah yeah oh come on like you're not carrying around something that i have oh, been- okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. the thing yeah okay yeah. Yeah, <laughs> this is true. We do have a major plot point that we're like, I don't know what this is, but I shouldn't touch it. Yeah, they're just <laughs> carrying it around, swapping it between them, which is very interesting that they have figured out to swap between them. <laughs> uh, so we'll we'll see what happens when they start getting more information about exactly what that means. And mm-hmm. they start actually pursuing that path specifically. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. It's a bomb, Alana. It's a, it's a magic bomb. <laughs> I mean, That's all I know. <laughs> at this point, I mean, we got burned by freaking moonlight. So I, I, I would not doubt it at this point. <laughs> Oh, and um, yeah, it sounds like uh, that you guys have really pulled together a fun group and that you guys are having a lot of fun with the uh, the podcast. Why don't you, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe Star, why don't you tell us where we can find Crit Like a Girl and uh, what we should do to catch up on the story in that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So we have a Twitter, which is uh, at Crit Like a Girl Pod uh, with no I in the word girl because there's no I in team. Um, and also, I think just because Stephanie made a typo, I don't really know the answer there. <laughs> I was about to say that was really cheesy because I'm pretty sure it was a typo. <laughs> yeah, I'm 90% sure. But uh, oh, no. we also, um, to find our links a little bit better, we have a, a link tree, which is uh, link, it's link tree, which is the link tr.ee uh slash crit like a girl uh all one word which just kind of takes you to a page of links which will let you you know get to our twitter to our spotify um to all that stuff Uh, again we have a recap of arc one that we put together shortly after that ended if you want to do a quick catch up and then uh there's several episodes of arc two that are kind of up as well as some backstory stuff but that should get you caught up fast if you don't want to listen through all of arc one, but I would, I would recommend it. It's, it's very <laughs> fun hearing everyone come into their own. 
Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, I will be sure to place those links into the show notes at dicegeeks.com. So anybody who is listening to this podcast right now can head over to dicegeeks.com and find the show notes for this episode. And you will find those links to check out Crit Like a Girl podcast. Well, Star and Alana, it was a pleasure uh, having you both on the show today. Uh, Thank you so much for uh, stopping by. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you again for inviting us. This was a lot of fun. All right. There you have it, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the interview today. If you want to check out the Crit Like a Girl podcast, just go to the show notes for this episode at DiceGeeks.com. You will find links there. Definitely worth your time. All right. If you want some free stuff, and who doesn't, by the way, head over to DiceGeeks.com slash free. You'll get 20 free dungeon maps, a custom character background for 5e, plus some other little PDFs that I tuck in there. You'll just have to find out what those are. You'll also never miss an episode of this show. And each and every Friday, you'll get an email update from me letting you know what is going on here in this wild world I like to call Dice Geeks. Okay, guys, I really appreciate you listening. If you would like to support the show in some way, you can rate it, review it, subscribe to it, like it, share it, whatever, wherever you are listening to it right now. Those things would be most appreciated. Also, you can support the show financially at patreon.com slash dice geeks. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening today. And until next Wednesday, keep gaming.